I'm Ashley, and this is my true story. It was really during my pregnancy that I figured out something wasn't right. I think for a long time I just thought like maybe it's just pregnancy. Um, maybe this is normal, you know, whatever, but just kind of knowing that it wasn't normal. Like my pregnancy was very traumatic, it was very hard. Um, I did not feel well the entire time um, in ways that are beyond just I feel nauseous all the time. <laughs> it was like I can't feel my legs or I don't have the energy to walk up the stairs by myself. I, I mean, it was so, like, there was even nights where, like, my husband, he'd carry me to up the stairs to go to sleep. He'd put me in the shower and he'd bathe me because I didn't have energy to do so. And um, I had some other people in my family diagnosed with Lyme disease too, and so I was um, encouraged to go and get tested and try to figure out if that's what was going on in my body. And... It was um, tested a couple different ways and it tested positive. And there's so much stigma with that particular type of disease. It's like, oh, there's no cure for it. You can't get rid of it. Like, you just have to manage your symptoms your whole life. With Lyme, there's a lot of, there can be a lot of like little gang members, which is what the doctors like to call it. So other viral or bacterial infections that can come from the initial disease. So I had. Lyme, but then I also had like six other co-infections and then he was like you also have intestinal parasites so I was encouraged to start doing uh, treatments from the from the doctors but the treatment wasn't super funny either you feel worse before you feel better um, and I just remember like laying my body halfway over our kitchen island and I'm just like I I can't do this like I feel even worse like I just just can't do it and I have a six month old and um, a lot of the time like my husband would be at work during the day and I would be laying on the couch with her in the pack and play because I didn't have the energy to play with her and you feel like yeah totally just like a terrible parent because your kid needs you or not necessarily that I was neglecting your needs but it's like you want to be the person that's like oh, I'm learning with my kid I'm taking her places I'm doing stuff with her and um, a lot of days it was just like, I just have to survive, is how it felt, and um, so I just, again, I was just like crying out to the Lord, and I was like, I can't, I can't do this, like, I need, I need you to help me, and he was like, I want you to stop, and I want you to know me as your healer, and I felt like this instantaneous boldness that began this process of this amazing journey with God um, from complete discouragement and hopelessness to an unshakable fearless faith. So yeah, I, I stopped doing treatment and just really pressed into God during that time. Um, and I found that my relationship with Him completely changed. Every day was an ongoing encounter um, and an ongoing um, hearing, hearing the Lord and feeling the comfort of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our comforter and He's our connection and our lifeline to heaven. And He's closer than our breath. He lives inside of us. And so I feel like as a lot of a lot of times as Christians we can know these things but we're never in a position where we have to know it here. And during those months of going through this it was like it, it was this training process of taking me from everything that I had known here about God and translating it into here. And so it was just this month, month and month process of undoing and um, just contending for healing at the same time because I felt like that's what he said, like that's what he told me to do. Just as an encouragement for anybody watching this, if you need a healing and you haven't seen it yet and you've been prayed for a hundred times, like don't stop. 
Um, I was prayed for, I can't even tell you how many times before I saw my breakthrough. And every prayer is a seed sown into breakthrough. It's not falling short. It's not not doing anything. Um, but I feel like the Lord has plans that we can't see when we're going through it of why there's a delay in a certain process or why God wouldn't it just be easier for you to just do it right away. The stuff that he cultivated in me during that time would not have happened and it wouldn't have been cultivated and wouldn't have completely revolutionized and shaped who I am in my relationship with him right now if I hadn't had that delayed um, process of healing. And that's ultimately what I'm most thankful for. I just remember like, just saying like, Lord, like you have my life, you have my heart, you have my mind, you have everything, every part of me. And I never could have said that before. Like, even before I knew I needed a healing, I can remember driving down the road and just contemplating like, that scripture says love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. And I was just like, I can't say that. I've, of my relationship with God, if I'm being honest. Like, I don't love God more than I love my husband. I don't love him more than I love my daughter. Like, I don't know what that looks like. It's not that I don't want to. It's just I, I don't know what that would even look like. And, um, and then going through this process, um, getting to that place of, like, Lord, if nothing in my situation ever changes, if I never see it on this side, like, if I can just know you this way for the rest of my life, like, that's fine with me. Because knowing and having a relationship with you completely trumps and overshadows even the hardest stuff that I'm going through. Someone had told me I went to a conference while I was sick, and someone had said, we get so enthralled with, Lord, if you'll just do this for me, Lord, if you'll just heal me, if you'll just get me this job that I need, if you'll just save my marriage, if you'll just blah, blah, blah. And he was like, why do we do that? Like, we just need to ask for more Jesus because when Jesus walks in the room, we get everything. Like, we get everything that we need just from encountering intimacy with God. And that was a completely new light bulb moment for me when I heard that. And then just watching it play out and walk out in my life of like my intimacy with God and seeking first the kingdom and all these things will be added. Like that was so true. I've been prayed over several times, probably like 50. <laughs> um, and that was, but I never felt any different. But we had people like regularly praying over me, like laying hands, um, I think from the time that I said, like, I can't do this, and I felt like the Lord told me that He wanted to heal me, um, which would have been, like, February, mid-February to, like, April, so a couple months. I think initially, I felt like, Lord, I'm being prayed over so many times. Like, I know I heard you right. Like, why aren't you doing anything? Like, I feel so stupid. Did, did I hear you wrong? I never gave up because I was just so enamored and so fixated on intimacy with God like never before that I didn't even think about there not there being another option. So I, I went to this um, deliverance ministry. I think I spent like four hours my first day with this woman. I could just tell something was different, like something had shifted, like when I was driving home from that place. And I started going like, am I, am I really? You know, like, not that I didn't want to like trust God, but it was just like, it'd been a process. So I just kind of, I just kind of waited and felt it out. And over the next few days, I was like, man, like, I'm not like sucking air every time I go up the, up the stairs. Um, I'm able to do things that I couldn't, couldn't do before but I went back one more time and I was in there for two hours and I was laying on the floor in there <laughs> on on the floor I had asked her I was like do you mind if I just like <laughs> just lay down on the floor it was not pretty there was lots of like snot and tears and stuff and 
Um, she was like, girl, you do whatever you gotta do. But I just laid on the floor and I just asked the Lord, I was like, did you heal me? Like, are we done here? You know, with this chapter. And I felt like he said, yeah, like it's done. And I got up and just started crying. I remember leaving there and calling my husband. And I'm like, I don't care what any of y'all say. Like, <laughs> I know the Lord's healed me. And, and um, my family was like, great, go get tested. <laughs> we don't know if we fully believe you. And I was like, well, that's fine, because I know you're not going to find any. They're not going to find anything. Um, and so went back to the doctor May of 2017 and got a clean bill of health from my doctor. He had tested me like four different times. And I didn't need the approval of a doctor, but it was kind of nice, you know, with my family going, hey, I've been telling you, <laughs> I told you, like, this is real. That helped even solidify more, like this is the Lord that did this. It wasn't any sort of medicine, because for one, like it would take a whole lot longer than three weeks to a month for to get rid of everything that I had and two I never touched anything for intestinal parasites and they were gone in that summer I can remember there's a, the, a trail and I hiked for the first time and I think almost two years I had my baby strapped on my back and was just hiking and I'm just like all alone on the trail which I'm thankful for now. Like, it seemed like a very, like, God thing that he did that for me, that I was hiking by myself because I cried pretty much that whole hike because I was like, I couldn't even get myself up the stairs two months ago and I'm hiking and I have my kid on my back and I'm doing stuff that I, like, had missed doing and I love to do so much. And I'm so thankful. And I'm so thankful for how I know you, more than anything. I've seen in my life and in other people's life how curiosity is like a window for breakthrough. And like even in scripture, we see like the woman with the issue of blood that reached out and touched Jesus' garment and was healed. It took her curiosity to pull her out of her bed in her condition, going out into a sea of people that was very socially unacceptable for her to do so. She pushed past every inconvenience because her curiosity was greater than any inconvenience. It was greater than any reputation, any stigma, any uncomfortableness in her body. She knew that Jesus had what she needed and she didn't allow her situation to snuff out her curiosity of him. And so I think if you don't believe in miracles, get curious. Like, God isn't afraid of us testing him. He's not angered by it. He's like, he's inviting it all the time. He's inviting you to be curious. He's not looking at you bad for, for doing so. I think he's a happy daddy who's sitting up there going like, yeah. Like, get curious, because look what I'm going to show you. Like, I really believe that that's the heart of my father. No parent would turn their kid away for asking a question. They, they would welcome it. They'd invite it. They want, I want my daughter to get to know me. I'm not going to get mad at her if she asks. And I just pray that through other people's issues, whatever they need, that they would press in, that they would be curious, and that they would watch God prove himself. It's real. Heaven's a real place. God's a real person, and he wants to use the temporary to build something in us that is forever. Whether or not we get the breakthrough we're contending for or not, like, God is still so good. All these things about him that I didn't have heart knowledge of prior to my healing, um, I know now, and the healing was just the cherry on top.